And week nine ends in dramatic fashion with the GOAT throwing for over 100,000 yards. Not this day, but in his career and the game-winning touchdown. And Heath Cummings is sporting a championship belt. Hey, somebody won something today. Heath, what what are you celebrating today, sir? I am. I'm celebrating a uh, a tournament championship for the uh, seventh grade West Boca Breakers basketball team. Went undefeated. Beat a kid that was like 6'4 wow. today. It was pretty fantastic. That is great. Congratulations. Uh, picked a good day. If you're going to have to miss any time on a football Sunday, this is a <laughs> good day. Only, only two afternoon games. Um, that is great. And uh, that congratulations to Heath uh, and his son. Lucas. Won the, good job, Lucas, Lucas. Won the championship. And uh, there we go. Round of applause. All right. Enough about us. Fantasy football time. Not exactly the bonanza we had last week, but that's okay. Um, yeah, some, some fun performances. Is it? It's okay. It's okay. We, look, no. Not a lot it would of be injury. better if it was like last week. <laughs> Who's the biggest winner, Heath, other than you and Lucas? Um, this Same might series. be a stretch, but I'm going to say Michael Carter. Uh, spectacular performance against the Buffalo Bills. He was good in the passing game. He was much better in the running game than James Robinson. Yes, Robinson scored a touchdown, but I, I think Carter established himself as the 1A in this situation, and there will be much better matchups ahead. Mostly, the answer is the New York Jets, because how spectacular is that to upset the invincible, already crowned the AFC champion Buffalo Bills? And yeah. now the AFC East is a race. It sure is. Um, Dave, who's your biggest winner? Believe it or not, the AFC East is a race. Uh, believe oh, it. Yeah. I think it's a two-team race. I'm not quite buying the Jets as real contenders, but the I team yeah. that just beat the. Th- That's okay. I mean, look, it happens. I, I don't really think they're going to win the the AFC East when you look at the quarterbacks that the Dolphins and the Bills have. But um, yeah, great job by them. What do I they saw see? the quarterback the Bills have today, and it frankly, wasn't that impressive. He may have gotten hurt. We got to keep an eye on his elbow. Yeah, there, it there didn't look good on those interceptions. That, yeah, that, he did not look like himself all day, but toward the end of the game. It looked like he got hurt. What did you ask me, Adam? I didn't want to pay attention to anything you said. Uh, you know, why don't you give me the biggest loser? We got the biggest winner from Heath. Give me the biggest loser. Let, let's keep it up with quarterbacks and Aaron Rodgers. I didn't Bulls say anything about Detroit. quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just talking about the quarterbacks in the AFC East. He, he rolls into Detroit. He lays the ugliest egg. You want to talk about some bad quarterback play and some bad throws. Mm. Aaron Rodgers really looked like a shell of his former self. And he he's kind of been leaning that direction all year but he, he he embraced it today he had a couple of great throws the touchdown for uh lazard that got called back looked like a, a pretty good play but i i can't trust this guy he had one of the easiest matchups on the board and he struggled 15 fantasy points Ugh, um, terrible believe it or not aaron Rodgers is not getting fixed this year He's just not a top 15 fantasy quarterback all year long. I'm going to believe it, but I, I think I'm going to be proven <laughs> right. <laughs> no, the I only tricky like part that. of that is is conceptualizing what QB 15 looks like this year, you know? Are there not Aaron f- Rodgers so far. Yeah. I mean, look, right. it, it, in the, the bottom line is he's out of the group of players that you want to start. Um, Correct. And boy, did they get hurt today. They, got, they are by far the most injured team coming out of week nine right now with Aaron Jones. Romeo Dobbs, cornerback Eric Stokes, uh, David Bakhtiari left and came back, but another offensive lineman, John Runyon, left. So they got Dallas next week. Um, Bad time for them to face a great team. Uh, All right, so he said Michael Carter. I mean, I guess I'll I'll ask you a little bit more about Michael. We can't just leave that as him being the biggest winner. When Joe Mixon scored 55 points today, by the way. Um, (laughs) You know, was it enough? It was only only 13 touches. I, I could sit here and say, actually, Michael Carter was a loser because... They just they are such an even split right now. Thirteen touches for Carter, fifteen for James Robinson. Um, going into a buy now. I, I'm not really buying him, Heath, as the biggest winner. You you want to take that back or you wanna you wanna keep it? No, well, I had the uh the the basketball team as the biggest winners, but you always ask Dave that. I'm more of the losers kind of guy. <laughs> not today. Were All there right. a lot of big winners today? I think there were more winners than losers. Can we talk about Mixon? I mean, I think we owe it to him. 50, 50 sure, points. but well, I, don't, I don't know what you expect problem. us to say. 
Here's the problem. Like I put Mixon as a winner. He was the best. He scored 65 points in one league that I'm in for me. It was fantastic. Um, but he was a must start running back who is a must start running back. So it's hard to say he's the biggest. I generally, when I look for the biggest winners and the biggest losers, look for players who I think their status may have changed. Yes. Mixon's status certainly did not change. I, totally was awesome. I, I, I mean, I, I get I think it's a good actually, lesson well, that when I'm somebody's sorry. getting 25 touches a game or seven catches a game and being really inefficient, we have to recognize that that volume still gives them enormous upside every week. Right, but on the other hand, there's Leonard Fournette starting to lose some of that work so he, i guess that, he's been that, losing it for three weeks he got out carried to made one more carry than michelle well, white and that should, was different as jamie told you or dave told you hours ago you should watch cbs sports hq fantasy football today when tom spencer's on tom told us that we were going to see more rashad white less leonard fournette before the games even happened and fournette still played the majority of snaps and he had the majority of the high value touches too 15 of 23 on third and fourth downs, six of seven snaps inside the 10. How many catches did he have in the game? Fournette had five. Five catches for 41 yards. White had three for seven yards. Uh, they're going to be close. They're going to be ranked close to each other for the foreseeable future. But th I, I just think this isn't a good running team. I think oh, you're going to see probably. them continue to throw and throw, and that's going to favor Fournette. Okay, I, I just, you know, for Mixon, look, I knew you weren't going to have anything earth-shattering to say about him, but I can't do the show without talking about Joe Mixon. No, we should say good job, Joe Mixon. Yeah, but also, I Bad mean, job, he, Panthers defense. he was averaging 3.4 yards per carry coming into the game. He was only a volume guy. He was guy. killing he was, me in my YPC league. No, just but destroying it, me. it matters. I mean, he was not really, okay, you know what? I don't think these go. numbers have been I do. updated. Let's do it, let's Adam. See, Come on. Let's see where he yep. ranked among running backs going into the game. He was just waiting for Rashad White to take touches away from him. No, I'm. What is with <laughs> you? Just like too, too much victory champagne. I think. Uh, all right, I'm on the, <laughs> I'm on the next here. Uh, I think Joe Mixon was RB twenty four in non PPR. I think he was something like sixteen in full PPR. Okay, going into the game, I I think it's pretty significant because people and where do we have him ranked this week? Seventeenth. Oh, there's six teams on by, but I think people were, were losing faith in Joe Mixon. I think this was a significant. And, and okay, then that is the absolute point of all of this. They should not have been. We had him ranked as a top 10 running back. He was getting 20 touches a game. They were throwing it to him all the time. Nobody is okay. I shouldn't say nobody. 95% of players who receive that type of volume are not going to be that inefficient all the time. Okay. It's fine. Uh, the other <laughs> point we've met is, our phobics and quota. The, the other point was that we had been mentioning for weeks that the key to Cincinnati turning things around was being able to run the ball. It helped that they ran the ball against the Panthers defense that just did not show up today. Okay. All right. Well, if you have anything to say, and there's the stats on Joe Mixon, 22 carries, 153 yards, four rushing touchdowns, four catches, 58 yards. Uh, and a receiving touchdown. You see 54 PPR fantasy points. I believe that would be non-decimal. I believe he was at 56.1 with decimal scoring. Unbelievable game in PPR. And, and maybe he was 55, but whatever it was. Uh, uh, but if you have anything to say to us, please leave us a nice Apple podcast review. On Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review. Tell everybody why you love our show, and then you can ask a question, and I end up reading a lot of those questions on our, on our Saturday mailbag. But we'd appreciate the help there. Your news and notes. All right, so the big headline will be Aaron Jones. We'll get to that in a second. But Baker Mayfield replaced P.J. Walker. Did they say anything? Do we know anything about who's going to start next week against the Falcons? I don't think they make those types of decisions immediately following the game. We will probably have a better idea tomorrow or Wednesday. And it was 35-0 uh, at halftime when they took out P.J. Walker. Uh, Kirk Cousins. That's he the, had nine uh, passing yards when he. I, yeah, I was gonna say I don't think DJ Moore had a stat in the first half. <laughs> Mayfield put up some big numbers. I imagine it was against backups, considering their secondary to begin the game was a bunch of backups for Cincinnati. Uh, Kirk Cousins left in the fourth quarter, then he came right back. He left on a forty-seven yard beautiful completion to Justin Jefferson. Then he came back. They're at Buffalo next week. All right, we, Dave told you about the uh, the uh, Josh Allen elbow situation. We're gonna keep an eye on that. 
Aaron Jones left with an ankle injury in the third quarter. They've got four more games before their bye. So A.J. Dillon was terrible again. He was actually working near the goal line even when Aaron Jones was in the game. True. But I wonder, you know, where we'll rank A.J. Dillon against the Cowboys next week if Aaron Jones can't play. We'll talk about Too that We will rank him <laughs> higher than he should be. Romeo Dobbs left with an ankle injury pretty much right away, and Christian Watson was evaluated for a concussion. They also lost cornerback Eric Again? Stokes, as I mentioned. Yes, yeah. back-to-back games with Christian uh, Watson. That's, that's no good. It's tough, yeah. David Bakhtiari has been in and out all year for them. He's their left tackle. He left, then he came back. But John Runyon, one of their guards, left with an injury. I don't think he came back. Deion Jackson. Do you guys have an update on Deion Jackson? He left in the third quarter. I think he had another carry later in the game, but only He one. had the first carry of the fourth quarter and wasn't seen again. Yeah. But it was a yeah. very it, it was a strange looking injury. It looked like he got hurt without contact. I hope that he's okay, but he may never be seen again. Uh Mike Evans was playing through an injury in this game. I think he had like a ribs injury or something. Yep. And he had a bad game. They get Seattle next week. They're probably going to lose to Seattle. Mm-hmm. Evan Ingram left with a back injury. Curtis Samuel, uh, if you started Curtis Samuel, you have <laughs> the officials to thank. Congratulations. A 49-yard touchdown catch where there was an official who tripped a, a Vikings defender, and it ended up being, a for Heineke and Samuel, a prayer answer to 49-yard touchdown. I mean, it, it was more than that. It, it almost looked like triple coverage. He was definitely double covered and somehow still caught this ball, fell to the ground without being touched, and then like bounced himself into the end zone. Life finds a way. It's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, Marcus Mariota missed Kyle Pitts on what could have been a 75 yard touchdown. The dude was wide open. Yeah, he overthrew him. He also missed him on a touchdown a uh, little bit before then in the game. Pitts, if those two catches go the other way, everyone's going nuts about Kyle Pitts again. Yeah. And now oh. I think Pitts had his fifth game with fewer than five PPR points or something like that. Unbelievable. He's one of the worst tight ends ever. <laughs> one of the worst third round picks ever. Yeah. yeah. That's not true. Go back and look at some of the third round picks. There are plenty that have been worse. Than Let's that. talk about guys who did not suffer any injuries at all. Uh, <laughs> Glory Amateur. Amir, oh, Amir Abdullah played nine snaps on third down for the Raiders. Josh Jacobs played zero snaps on third down for the Raiders, which brings us to the Worryometer. And Josh Jacobs will be on the Worryometer. But first, Tom Brady. Yes, he got the win, won the game with that with a last, uh, not quite a last second touchdown, but close. But he scored 17.2 fantasy points on 58 pass attempts. 10. You could just say the Bucks offense. He said a 10 on Brady? 10. Dave Brady, you got to be scared. He had 143 yards and one touchdown in the fourth quarter. I mean, it it looks, and this is the problem. This happened with Aaron Rodgers three or four years ago. It happened with Tom Brady three or four years ago. It looked like they had fallen off the cliff and just weren't that special or good anymore. That's exactly what it looks like again right now. Um, There's no visual evidence to suggest that either Brady or Rodgers are above average NFL quarterbacks currently. My blood is boiling. I don't Why? agree. I don't agree. And Tony Romo said it himself. He said he did it at the, the beginning of the game. He said is, it, and he said two really boiling? interesting things. Yeah, no, he said he said if anybody who thinks Tom Brady's washed up, watch the tape. That's what he no, said. No, I agree. But and, and, and sorry, one last thing. My whole ahead. theory about Brady has been that it's a Godwin problem. That God, because look how how many targets Dave do they give to the Godwin at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage? He's just it's not terrible. the same guy. And yeah, that's what Godwin Romo, should stop throwing those passes to himself behind the line of scrimmage, and everything will be better. Well, that's what Romo also said. He said they got to get Godwin healthy, and he he expressed some optimism that they could in the near future. But that's Dave. That's why I think the problem is he just. He's got nothing because you say, oh, he's got Evans and Godwin. I don't really think he has Godwin. I think he has Evans and, and Evans. Every week it looks the same with Godwin where he gets a nice amount of targets, a good dose of catches, and then he doesn't do anything with them. So I agree with you on that. And Evans just hasn't been quite the same guy. This is a good example of it this week. Five catches for 40 yards on 11 targets. In the fourth quarter, Scotty Miller was his dude. And Miller dropped the touchdown. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I don't think Brady's washed by any stretch. Like if if you had to tell me I had to pick one for the rest of the year between Brady and Aaron Rodgers, I'm rushing into Tom Brady's arms. But I just I can't help but think it's three straight games where there's all these could have been's or should have been's where Brady should have had well over 20 fantasy points. 
Yeah. This week there wasn't that. In fact, he really should have had probably in the neighborhood of like eight fewer fantasy points than what he had. Yeah. This offense was terrible. The play yeah. calling in the first three quarters was absolutely disgusting. They again, they cannot run the football. It can't be done in this offense anymore. Brady's gonna have a lot of games like this where he's throwing the ball fifty plus times. You've got to hope that he finds three hundred yards and two touchdowns every week. I, I would agree with I have more hope for Brady than Rodgers. And I have more hope for Rodgers than Stafford. Um, so that's something. But I'm hoping <laughs> they turn into 18 fantasy point per game guys. Like, it's a disaster. So yeah. what do you do if you have Brady? You can sit there and well, take I it would and not do start see anybody if else. You can package him with Aaron Jones for <laughs> Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, okay. that's, that's great. what I tried to do. That's I think Heath and I made a very good trade this morning. I have no <laughs> I traded air I traded Christian McCaffrey and Matthew Stafford, who Heath doesn't need. He has Dak Prescott that'll be using most weeks. I traded McCaffrey and Stafford for Brady and Aaron Jones. I was three and five. I really did it because I, I I mean, Aaron Jones against the Lions, I thought was going to be huge. And yeah. somebody told me to buy low on Tom Brady. So I bought low on Tom Brady. And whether or not it's, it doesn't even matter if it's Brady's fault or not. It's, it's a huge problem. And you got to, you know, what really problems. helped me was that I was a 30 point favorite over Jamie in that league. And so I thought, you know, I could probably make this trade and give up all these points for this week and still win. Did Thankfully, you? I'm now a 50 point favorite. So I think <laughs> it's going to work out okay. Uh, you're going to be nine and oh. So, yeah. and with, the, uh, with just, the just, just so it's there, Adam, you gave up 15 points on the trade chart on that deal. Ooh. Well, um, I didn't feel like I had any chance of winning with Matthew Stafford as my quarterback. So I was hoping for Tom Brady to turn things around. And I just, I can't. I can't do it. The lack of a run game is actually bad. Like I, he's going to keep throwing, keep yes. throwing, but it's bad because they just can't move the ball and they get into these predictable third and longs. And whatnot. All right. Sorry. Anyway, Amonra St. Brown, zero to 10 for Amonra St. Brown, who had four for 55 on nine targets. And he was only, he was like, uh, sorry, he has only one game this year with more than 73 yards. It's a six. I think we're still going to start St. Brown. I think we've got to look at him as a number two receiver though, and not as a number one guy. And Jared Goff is really starting to turn back into Jared Goff. I think he's a tough guy to set the baseline for. Because if the baseline is where he was drafted, then I don't really have much worry. I think he's going to be better than that. Mm -hmm. If the baseline is the top 12 guy we elevated him to after two or three weeks this year, then I'm like a nine. So okay. I, I think he's a number two. Like Everything Dave said is right. But I don't think you're going to lose value on where you drafted him. I like that he's had at least nine targets in five of seven games this year. I like that he typically gets, he only had four catches today. That's ridiculous. Usually he gets around six, seven catches with gusts up to eight and nine. <laughs> uh, I, I, I have to recognize that since his injury, he doesn't have a game with more than 13.9 PPR points. And I would also say, Dave, you you know, you mentioned nine targets in five of seven games, but it's it's to me, it's really nine targets in every game because the two games he didn't have one, he he barely played basically. Except we started him. Uh, yes, we got tricked, but he when he plays, he's getting nine True. targets, and that and that is you know great for uh, zero to ten on Josh Jacobs, who's had two disappointing games in a row. He did have seventeen carries and three catches today, but like I said, did not play a snap on third down. Zero to ten on Josh Jacobs. Again, a very, very similar discussion as St. Brown in terms of what are you talking about being worried about? Where I drafted him? 0, 0. 0.00. <laughs> um, the top five way we've ranked him in the last couple of weeks? 10. Uh, I think he's a high-end number two running back who will have better weeks than this, but there's going to be some, some bumpiness along the way. Like 11.7 for a down week is not the worst thing you can get out of a starting running back. I agree. I think the worryometer has got to be more like a three where you know you're starting this guy. You know he's getting the workload. It's 20 touches against Jacksonville. You just hope that he would score. The Raiders' offense is a little wonky. Last week they were terrible. This week they were better. But really the only part that was better was Carr throwing to Devontae Adams, and they just absolutely destroyed Jacksonville in the first half, and Jacksonville shut that stuff down with no exceptions in the second half. He's got the Colts next week and then the Broncos after that. Not the best matchups for him. I think you downgrade expectations just a little bit for Josh Jacobs. Would you take Jacobs over any of these players I, I am about to mention? Ramondre Stevenson, Travis Etienne, Ken Walker. Nope. No. 
But why? Two weeks ago, I would have I would have said yes to Stevenson if Harris was like 100% healthy right now. So I reserve the right to change that in two weeks if Harris is able to get healthy and reclaim 70% of his old role. Um, mm -hmm. But the other two have just elevated themselves into top five discussion. Ken Walker is my number one running back in Dynasty right now. As he yeah. should be. It's just a it's a tough question to ask because you know, two weeks ago Jacobs looked like the best and he was he had a run of three straight games with 30, 30 points right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. had two rough ones in a row. And everybody was like, you know what, we should make Derek Carr beat us. Not sure if that's what happened. I mean, two weeks ago they just had the worst game ever against the Saints. This game he had seventeen carries and three. It just didn't didn't do great. He just have he had a bad game today for by his standards. All right, zero to ten. I'm going to say let's assume Josh Allen is healthy. I'm not going to get into the whole well if he's out because obviously if Allen's hurt, then it's a ten. But let's assume Josh Allen is Josh Allen. Zero to ten on Gabe Davis, who had by the way two catches for 33 yards and five targets. Believe it or not, Gabe Davis is a boom bust number three wide receiver rest of the season. Starting to believe it. I, I think the results have kind of suggested that that's exactly what he is. It's uh. Not since week one has he had a game with more than three catches and three touchdowns total in his last six and no more than 5.5 PPR points in each of his past two against the Packers and the Jets. Yeah, I'm, I'm not liking what I'm seeing from Gabe Davis. I would much prefer to start him as a flex moving forward. And, and much like I said earlier, like this is another lesson to be learned when a guy's averaging 17 yards per target and 28 yards per reception, he's either going to need to see a lot more targets or th the bottom's going to fall out. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I would be more concerned about Gabe Davis. If Josh Allen had two good games in a row and Davis struggled, but Allen has thrown for 218 yards and 205 yards in his last two games. Uh, before that he threw for 297 or more in five of his first six games. So I, I hope I trust Josh Allen to bounce back, assuming he's healthy. And with that, I think you'll see more production from Gabe Davis. Um, plus, you know, he doesn't need that. He, he doesn't need that many targets. Well, the, that, that's the problem is like those words right there. I don't know if we have enough of a sample size to suggest that we should expect Gabe Davis to be one of the most efficient wide receivers in the NFL. But I do know that his target volume this season and like we're not even considering the past, which was less suggests if he's not one of the most efficient wide receivers in the NFL, he's not a must start wide receiver. Yeah. He, he's All not right. getting the volume to be someone you start just because he looks like his profile suggests you should, he has to be stupid efficient to be a must start guy. Let's go to our next one here as we look at the Colts offense, which mustered up 103 passing yards. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll cue that one up there. Uh, yeah, you should have had that one ready for the Colts. Uh, zero to 10 worryometer on Michael Pittman. Zero to 10. 36 and a half. <laughs> um, I, I, I will say that if, if they go back to Matt Ryan, I will lower that number to nine. But Ellinger isn't getting it done. I know it's a tough matchup. I know it's the Patriots and Bill Belichick and all that, but I'm just, I am not feeling, I, first of all, I traded Michael Pittman 10 minutes before kickoff today for an injured guy. The, the injured guy was Mark Andrews and I had to throw in, who did I have to throw in for, with him? He, like, Evan Ingram. I traded him and Evan Ingram for Mark Andrews today. So I feel good about that trade. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I feel really good about it now. I definitely felt good about it when I made the deal. But he's 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 not being targeted much downfield, if at all. They're expecting him to make plays after the catch. He did have one. I think he had. I can't remember if it was called back or not. But he had one really good sideline catch uh, from Ellinger in this game, and otherwise he was a mess. And this is an awful offense right now. They don't have much going for themselves at all. This, I, this is easy to start Gabe Davis over Michael Pittman moving forward. Yeah. You could probably give me five or six other names, and I would tell you to start them over. Um, believe it or not, the Colts do not have a fantasy starter unless until Jonathan Taylor comes back. Oh, okay. uh, well, hold on. Who's their kicker? I, here's the problem. Believe and I'm going to need help from you guys when we get to the games because I did the worst job I have ever done of coming up with these questions. 
every single answer was 90% believe it. <laughs> like the Aaron Rodgers one, this one, um, everyone I put out there. So you guys have to come up with the new questions. Okay. I'll put them on Twitter. All right. See if we can do better. All right. We're going to take a break here. We're obviously very worried about Michael Pittman, but we'll tell you about the winners when we come back on fantasy football today. Back here to talk winners from week nine. Heat's winners are the West Boca seventh grade breakers. They won the championship, completed an undefeated <laughs> season, and he has a big belt to show for it. That is awesome. Michael Carter was one of his winners as well. Um, Joe, Mixon. Joe Mixon. We talked Joe about Mixon. winners. Okay, Dave's winners. Luckily, Dave gave us six. Now he gave us four. <laughs> um, we got wide receivers Garrett Wilson and Josh Palmer, who both went over 90 yards and had eight catches. Wilson did it mm-hmm. against the Bills. Palmer against the Falcons. We have tight end TJ Hawkinson, who caught all nine of his targets for 70 yards in his Vikings debut. And Cordaro Patterson. Uh, split carries pretty evenly with Algier. Algier had 10 and put Patterson at 13, but uh, Patterson had 44 yards and two touchdowns. He also had a large, long touchdown run called back. Yes. All right, so Garrett Wilson is going into a bye week, but what do you want to say about him and Josh Palmer? I think with Wilson, if he had had a bad game this week, people would have dropped him during the bye. And now I don't think they can or should. I think that he's going to continue to see some good volume from Zach Wilson. I might sound a little bit like Heath now because Heath was talking about Garrett Wilson like this earlier this morning and earlier this week and earlier this season. So kudos to you, Heath, for being on top of it. And I actually thought Zach Wilson had a better game. I didn't see every throw that he made, yes. but I thought he had a better game this week, and I thought Wilson did a better job of, uh, of just being – he sometimes needs to be in the right place to catch some of these throws from Zach Wilson. I think he did it, and he did it against Buffalo. And I think that that means something. So if we're talking about a wide receiver who's going to have a floor of 12 PPR points, five catches for 70 yards, and he could easily get into this type of range, eight for 92, because contrary to Michael Carter being a winner, I don't know how often this Jets run offense is going to be like spearheading what the Jets do when they have the ball. I think Wilson's going to have to be involved. And he's still, I've said it before, an awesome route runner. So if you've got him, I think you should feel good about him as at worst a number three receiver rest of the year. And yes, Wilson ahead of Michael Pittman moving forward. Is it is it Josh Palmer ahead of Michael Pittman too? If we knew that Keenan Allen wasn't going to come back, I think I'd say yes. I really like that Palmer kept getting all this attention, certainly was used as a number one wide receiver, definitely helped that he was playing against the Falcons. And they are a good matchup for all wide receivers, including DJ Moore on Thursday, by the way. Uh, and, and we've seen it from Palmer before. When one of the top two guys for L.A. is out, he steps in. He usually does a very good job. I think he'll continue to do that for however long Williams and Allen are both out. We don't know when Allen's coming back, and we think Mike Williams will be back in a couple of weeks. We'll wait and see on that one. Until then, happy to start Josh Palmer. I had him ranked as a number two receiver. I believe we all did on the site. We're probably all going to do it again in his next game. I, I would like a compilation of the faces that Adam made during the Josh Palmer segment. It was, uh, it was, well, he, he hasn't been that good. I, I think it's better for him when Mike Williams is out than Keenan Allen's out. He plays Mike Williams position, you know? Um, but obviously it's just the targets when they're both out. He's a must start. Uh, I don't know who's coming back first at this point. So I guess we can just reassess, but I, I don't think people should assume that they have a must start player rest of season and San Francisco next week's going to be tougher than Atlanta. But you didn't say that. I'm Agreed. not saying David. David no, no, but I still think you should start Palmer next week because they're, yeah, I start him. they're a team that struggles to run the ball no matter who they play. And now they're playing the 49ers. They're, they're, they're going to trail in this game next week. You know Palmer could see 10 targets again. All right, Dave, real quick to wrap up your winners. Do you consider TJ Hawkinson? Unfortunately, he's at Buffalo, then Dallas, then New England in his next three games. Do you consider Hawkinson and or Patterson to be must-start players going forward? I do. I'm really encouraged by Hawkinson getting nine targets and then making nine catches. He was a middle of the field option on the majority of those targets. And it, it's just going to open things up even more for Minnesota. And they're really going to put this offense in position to be one of those pick your poison type deals. He's an upgrade over what they had at tight end. They played to his strengths and he did a good job with it. It's a matter of time before he starts to pick up some end zone targets along the way. Patterson, not only did he split touches, with Tyler Algier, they split snaps evenly, too. They both played 38% of the snaps, but Cordero Patterson, 6 of 11 on third and fourth downs, 4 of 7 inside the 10. There's an edge that he came back to 
in his very first game. And now he's going to be able to build off that moving forward. The short week is going to help him because his legs are going to be fresher than Carolina's defense. Cordero Patterson, a must start fantasy Wait. running back who I might even put in the top 12 this week. I'm so excited about him. Excuse me. Panthers. Are you telling me we have the Falcons and the Panthers on Thursday night football? I know you're excited. So <laughs> just pause deep breath. Close your eyes if you're not driving and and just picture Marcus Mariota versus Baker Mayfield, PJ Walker, Arthur Smith versus Steve Wilkes. Mm. Um, it, it, we're, we're looking at the game of the year. On, uh, I also have that sexy Heath. Mm. Mm. Yeah, let me throw that in there. <laughs> and all the sounds of Heath Cummings. I can't believe you just called Heath sexy. I well, he is in that sound yeah. bite. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Appreciate it. Thank you. Let's go to the losers here. Uh, Dave's losers are Gabe Davis, Aaron Rodgers, and Raheem Moster. We haven't talked about him. Moster with nine carries, 26 yards, and a touchdown. He did have two targets, no catches. Jeff Wilson also had nine carries. He had 51 yards, and he had three catches for 21 yards and a receiving touchdown. Oh, boy. Much too even of a split than we were hoping for here. Yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, what, so I guess you're moving Patterson ahead of Mostert. Rest of yeah, season. you've got to. And guess who played more snaps? Wilson. Wilson, 51% of the snaps for him. <laughs> Mostert had more of the high well value done. snaps at 45%. And Mostert did play four or five snaps inside the 10. Uh, Wilson's touchdown catch was inside the 10, was it not? It was right it, around there, I, think. I think it was right at 10 yards. So that must have been the one play that, that Wilson was in on. And he was just, I think he was lucky with that catch, but he still had two other catches for 11 yards outside of that one. This is going to be a split. Moving forward, it, I, I thought it would get to this point maybe in like three games, not in one. And some of it has to be chalked up to playing Chicago. Their run defense isn't very good. And I think that Wilson was just able to capitalize. So we'll, we'll see what happens, but I don't think you can feel good about Mostert as a number two running back anymore. East losers are DJ Moore. Two catches, 24 yards on six targets. <laughs> after. He's poor. Jay Moore makes this list every week. He's either a winner or a loser. Yeah, every week. Back and forth. Back and forth. Total. total uh, with DJ Moore on our winner's loser. Yeah. List. Well, he does get Atlanta on Thursday, as we just heard. Uh, DJ Moore, Khalil Herbert, who had seven carries compared to 14 for Montgomery. And DeAndre Swift, who had five touches and 50 total yards. The, uh, and nine it, snaps. It, wow. It kind of seems like they're turning DeAndre Swift into like a situational player like a third down type guy i i don't know if it's just a complete lack of trust that he can stay healthy or if he's that banged up still but you cannot start deandre swift with any confidence until this role changes his current role is not one that is startable or really even flex worthy for fantasy purposes it's very similar to the role of khalil herbert who we hoped after outplaying david montgomery last week would maybe have a chance to earn like a lead role and got out touched two to one in the running game. And Montgomery saw the only running back targets. So that dream will die for at least another week. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like Baker Mayfield's going to be the starting quarterback for the Panthers. Baker Mayfield clearly hates DJ Moore. <laughs> and so that would be a bad thing. All right. Uh, All right. I, so I, hold I, on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Nine snaps for D for Deandre Swift. Three of them were on third downs. Uh, he had a second and 17 snap. He had a second and 20 snap. Uh, I'm sure he didn't have every single passing down snap that they had in this game, but it's, it's a huge step backward. But, I wouldn't say that you can't trust him at all. I think he's a good bye week running back in PPR. I, I mean, I think he's going to get 10 touches, right? He's got one. I think he has one game this season with more than 10 touches. He actually almost scored. He came a yard away. He did. He did. He's touchdown. really good. I, I. It's just he only had five touches in this game. So ten. I mean, would be a dream come true. I. I don't he know. won't be a top thirty running back for me this week. Uh, which all right. You've got the Andre Swift. You get a little notification. Adam Azer has offered you a trade, Cordaro Patterson for your DeAndre Swift. Accept or reject? No, I accept. You can take Pat. Dave's going to take Patterson. He I'm. I'm not at quite as optimistic on Patterson rest of season, partially because of his age, partially because today was mostly about scoring two touchdowns. Tyler Algier was far more efficient a rusher, and they had the same number of carries. 
So I don't think that means that Patterson's going to have a lot more carries than Algier next week. Okay. All right. Would you rather have DeAndre Swift or Miles Sanders? Sanders. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dave, you're the guy who just... <laughs> yeah, Would you rather him, have DeAndre tell Swift him, or Colonel Sanders? Tell him. DeAndre Swift is that clearly ahead of Miles Sanders? No. No. Oh, you knucklehead the other way. Oh, Miles Sanders is... Well, I mean, if DeAndre Swift is is healthy, then he's better than Sanders. But Right, but we're not living in Wait, that imaginary world. I don't think we know if DeAndre Swift is healthy, is Dan Campbell going to give him a lot of carries anyway? He doesn't exactly. trust him to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so drop DeAndre Swift is what Dave is saying. <laughs> no, just kidding. I didn't say Jamie's that either. Jamie's here to hang out. Don't drop DeAndre Swift. Don't drop. Hi, boys. Don't touch hey, that dude. dial. We're going to take a quick break here. Uh, when we come back, we will get to the games. We'll recap all the games. Start. How'd the start of the week do? We'll tell you right after this on Fantasy <laughs> Football Today. The start of the week was freaking great. Uh, we'll get to that Bears-Dolphins game. Justin Fields with something like 46 points. Unbelievable. 47, 47. We have it. Sorry, I didn't mean to shortchange him. Our first game is Jets 20 and Buffalo 17. Now, Jamie, you're the guest of honor for as long as you can stay here. Um, Heath has been terrible today at making the Believe It or Nots. He's asked us to do it. Would you I, like I put to out make four polls on Twitter, <laughs> and they were 90% yes on all of them. So obviously, I'm doing a bad job this week. So come up with a Believe It or Not for the games. I will do the Twitter polls. I'll write the ones that are closest. Would you like to do one for, for Jets Bills, Jamie? Uh, sure. Uh, believe it or not, Gabe Davis is droppable. Ooh. Well, I already did a Gabe Davis one. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been better, I guess. Um, I did, believe it or not, he's a boomer bust number three wide receiver rest of season, and everybody said yes. Droppable. Uh, I'll be back. What? Already? <laughs> you took too long to get to me. All right, all right. We'll see. You. Oh, all right. He's not droppable. I'll do it, believe it or not. Uh, you can do a Michael Carter one, I guess. Yeah. You can do a Devin Singletary oh. one. Believe it or not, James Robinson is the better running back to have in the Jets' backfield. But no. Carter just outscored him, right? Okay, but Robinson had more touches. I would it's guess. true. Honestly, okay, believe it or not, James Robinson will be the best Jets running back rest of season. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I don't believe oh. that. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to not believe it. This isn't as easy as I make it look. <laughs> <laughs> so I can tell you this Robinson did play four or five snaps inside the 10 obviously the short yardage touchdown catch that he had looked good but that's not something that I think we could expect from him from game to game I think you look at James Robinson almost the same way you view any other part-time grinder or running back if you start him you're hoping that he can find 30 yards 40 yards and the end zone and if he doesn't you're going to be left with ugly single digit fantasy points James Robinson or Khalil Herbert, rest of the season? I still think there will be a, a moment in time where Khalil Herbert will be awesome for fantasy. I got to tell you, I think I'm selling the Jets running backs. If I'm just going to add a little spice to today's recipe, I you know, I don't buy the Jets. I think that's the main thing. And I, I, I obviously think they're good. I think they're, I mean, I no, mean the I Giants are for good. real and the Jets are not. No, the Giants are definitely not for real. I don't buy them at all. I just don't, I, I just don't buy the Jets really. And, I don't buy Zach Wilson. I think he's pretty terrible. Would the you Chiefs. buy, believe Hold it or on. not, Kadarius Tony had the first catch for the Chiefs in this game. Already? I'm that far behind out of my stream? <laughs> Jeez. They haven't even snapped the ball yet. Um, I guess I'll buy it. So listen, I, I, what I'm saying is the, the Jets running backs both had good games with 13 and 15 touches. You just can't expect that. It's an even split. Again, Wilson doesn't throw to his running backs. I I'm selling the Jets running backs. That's my. I'll just throw it out there to 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 get, you know get get a little get a little spice going here. How about Michael Carter at half of his rushing yards in the fourth quarter? And I would I would imagine that most of them came on their their last drive of the game. Well, do you agree with me or no? Yeah, I don't I don't want to feel like I'm obligated to a Jets running back in my lineup rest of season. But if I had to pick one, it's still Carter because I think he's the more explosive runner of the two. I will say the thing that Carter had that rushing touchdown and it was a goal to go situation. But I believe they were in the hurry up and he kind of stayed in the game. 
Mm-hmm. So could so I, I'm interested to see what happens if Robinson becomes the short yardage back. All right, we talked about Garrett. Yeah, I also have to say that there there was a part in the game where Zach Wilson looked like he was going to get knocked out, he needed help getting up off the turf and all that, and then he stayed in the game. I was so excited for Mike White to come in because oh. I know that that dude oh. loves to dink and dunk to the, his running back. Yeah, yeah, and if, if Zach Wilson, if he got knocked out for the year. That would have changed the entire story on Michael Carter. You're being a, a big meanie pants right now. Devin Singletary Boo. or Michael Carter rest of season. Carter. What's going to happen in December when the Bills have those? Like, <laughs> Devin Singletary or Michael Carter rest of season. Those, I'm, I'm going to say Carter. Right. It's, it's really hard to like Devin Singletary when he, he, he plays a ton. And he gets a lot of work each week relative to, you know, his team. But just so many empty numbers week in yeah. and week out. Yeah. Low value. Low value touches. Devin Singletary. Cincinnati 42, Carolina 21. Cincinnati had the ball for more than 39 minutes in this game. They benched their starters for a big portion of the second half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, believe it or not. Am I doing this? Believe it or not? Unless Dave wants to. I'll do it. You guys, you know, it's kind of my job, right? Believe it or not. Actually, it's Heath's job. Deontay Foreman is still a reliable fantasy running back. Yep. I believe it. No. Fight. No, I do not. (laughs) (laughs) Fight. Um, I I think he had a chance. Wow, another catch for Tony. No, that's Juju. Um, It's going to really confuse me with Tony wearing 19. I don't like that at all. Um. I think that we thought it was a committee beforehand. It was a committee until Hubbard got hurt. Foreman had an incredible game followed by a disastrous game. And so we should expect that when Hubbard comes back, it's a committee again. And it's a terrible team. So a committee is not a must start running back. It'll lean back toward committee for sure. But I still think that they get, they try to get him rolling first and foremost. This, by the way, to me, is the profile of a sell-high running back, is a guy who's not involved in the passing game and is not on a good team. Mm -hmm. Um, I talked about that a little bit earlier in the year, uh, but you can't sell high now. But if they get a good game game script, they could easily have a good Deontay Foreman game on Thursday against the Falcons. Right? Yeah. True. All right. All right. Anything on t- on Tyler Boyd or or Higgins? I mean, Higgins was probably going to have a big game, but they took Burrow out, obviously. But Boyd yeah. was disappointing. So your, believe it or not, was Deontay Foreman is still a trustworthy starting running back? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you going to tweet these? Yeah. Uh, every single one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there, there's no reason to sweat Higgins. There's no reason to sweat Boyd. I think you can sweat Hayden Hurst. I don't think you can view him as a... For however long Jamar Chase is out, I can use him as my streaming tight end, especially since they're on a bye this coming game. You can't use he, him then. So if you could he's, do, he's a drop. Heath, if you could just do one favor for me. Okay. When you tweet, just mute your mic because we're getting okay. all tappy tap taps. Um, all right. Tyler Boyd, though, I think only has two games with your, this year with more than 66 yards. I hope Jamar Chase can come back. I mean, they didn't put him on IR. So they got to buy, and then right. Our so come back. the idea behind that was they think they can get him back for that game against Tennessee in Week Twelve. Okay, that'll be four weeks, not four games, because of the buy. Okay, okay. Uh, Detroit fifteen, Green Bay nine. Hmm. Believe, believe it or not, um, which team do I want to go to? Here? Believe it or not, Alan Lazard is better than Amonra St. Brown. Rest of season in half PPR. Yep, I'll believe that. Woo! It, this this is the only guy that can get it done in Green Bay who's healthy right now. Like, I don't have a I lot. Trust of hope. Alan Lazard the most of anybody that's that's healthy at this point. Jones yeah, would make I can't that list go quite that far, but it'll make for a good Twitter poll. Yeah, good. Jamie. Believe it or not, Alan Lazard is better than Amonra St. Brown in half PPR rest of season. Don't believe it. Okay. You you, you want to buy low on Amonra St. Brown? You still believing in him? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think we'll see uh we'll see some better days ahead. Um nice got Chicago you know, this coming game. This is uh this is a tough, tough secondary, you know, for what we've seen from the majority of the season. So um they're still trying to figure some things out. You know, no Josh Reynolds, no, no TJ Hawkinson. 
uh, dominant defensive performance today. <laughs> you know, so um, <laughs> I, I think there's still a lot to love about where uh, ARSB is. Um, there's a lot to like about where Alan Lazard is too, uh, just knowing that the injuries for the Packers, but Aaron Rodgers just looks lost right now, man. It's, uh, it's, it's tough to watch that team play. This is two games coming off the bye where the Detroit defense has not been near as terrible as they were before the bye, right? Yeah, but how much of this defense looking good is because of Rodgers looking bad? Oh, their defense was was shredded last week by the Dolphins. Believe it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'll see if I can wrap up on this game here. Uh, A.J. Dillon, all right, where, I'm going to put your feet to the fire here. Does he make like the top 15 next week against the Cowboys if Aaron Jones is no. out? 15, no. maybe. No. 20? He'll be top 20. 80? <laughs> okay. He might be 20th. I mean, you still got four teams on a bye. You know, it's uh, still some injuries at the position. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll see what... what uh, what happens tonight? What happens Monday night? What happens Sunday night? What happens Monday night? But, um, you know, I, I, I would hope that he gets all the work. You know, I don't think they're going to go to uh, Keelan Williams, right? Um, as, mm. as, as the guy there. <laughs> What's that guy's name? Green? What is it? No. Bay Green? <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, I don't remember their third string running back. Okay. Maybe Kylan Hill. Kylan Hill, 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 Hill. Hill just Hill. activated off of, yeah. off of an injury list. Patriots 26 and the Colts 3. Believe it or not, Jacoby Myers is wor- uh, Jacoby Myers is worse than Gabe Davis rest of season, even in full PPR. That's a terrible one. You can do better than that. This game sucks for believe it, it or not. It does really. Big one for the Colts yeah. that they have no starters until until uh, Taylor Taylor returns. Back. And I got multiple responses. I voted not because Taylor is not a starter when he returns. Oh. Mm. Mm. Okay, then let's talk about that. <laughs> believe it or not, Jonathan Taylor is still a must start guy when he returns. I What's your that. expectation level? In this scenario, it's a must start. <laughs> have you been starting Najee Harris all season long? Have you been right. starting James Conner when he's healthy? Right. Have you been starting David Montgomery all season long? I mean, you know, there, there's there's a pretty, I'm sure, long track record of these guys that you drafted in the first four rounds that it's hard to bench them. You know, we, we, we can sit here and say, oh, but you have a Ramondre Stevenson or a Travis Etienne or a Ken Walker and these guys. There's so few uh, of, of those scenarios that, you know, you, you can afford to bench guys like that. So I'm starting Jonathan Taylor when he's healthy. Whenever that is. Yeah. Just, I wouldn't be surprised if they shut him down. I mean, you know, we had a pretty, uh, you know, I don't know, similar example, but, but a similar example, you know, when Christian McCaffrey was hurt, uh, knowing that they, they wanted to make sure maybe he was healthy for the previous season, you know, the Panthers shut him down. If the Colts feel like they can get back on track in 2023, they might shut down Jonathan Taylor because he's still on his rookie deal. Why would you want to risk, you know, further injury if he's, you know, trying to play through his ankle injury? And just for record keeping purposes, all of your believe it or nots are clear nots on all of the votes so far. Nobody believes anything you're saying. Really? Well, Dave does. He believed Alan Lazard was better than St. Brown. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think we have much else to say about this uh, this crap game. Uh, Chargers 20 and the Falcons 17. Believe it or not. Uh, you seen these every Sunday? No. I, this is usually Heath's job. Believe it or not. Buy low he also on, doesn't sing every Sunday. Buy low on Kyle Pitts. <laughs> How many times have you said that? <laughs> every Sunday. But, uh, well, the, the, the point I do being not believe it. that he could have had a monster game, and people might not know that just by looking at the box score. Yeah. Oh, it's you mean good. the one big drop down field? Yeah, the yeah. overthrow on the 75. It was an overthrow. Was the, the touchdown but, might have been a drop. There's been at least just, three really games close. this year that we've said Kyle Pitts could have had a better game if he would have caught the ball in the end zone or if the one he caught we thought was a touchdown was actually a touchdown or if Marcus Mariotti had made the throw. Like, it's a terrible situation with almost no pass volume and not accurate passes. I don't... So, no, don't, you're not buying it. I do so not. So, you're not it. buying it. If it's a bench player on my team, if it's, like, something obvious, like Zay Jones or something like that, Brian Robinson... He you didn't redraft, right, Adam? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I would. I think I would take the chance. Because, look, seven targets this week, nine the week before, 
five the week before. But no one's that, giving you Kyle Pittsburgh, Zay Jones, or Brian Robinson. No, I don't think so either. But you never know if you're in a oh, league with oh, somebody that's just like, I'm tired of Kyle Pitts being. Would you on trade Amon Ross St. Brown to get Kyle Pitts? Hell no. Oh, no. Okay. Well. Would you trade, but would you trade, um, would you trade Antonio Gibson for Kyle Pitts? No. If I'm needy at tight end and I can, and I'm good at running back, no. that's a move I would make. No. You'd rather have, no. Jamie would rather have Gibson. Dave would. Yes. Okay. Heath would rather have wow. Gibson. All right. Good. Last one on this game. Believe it or not, you cannot start Justin Herbert unless he has Mike Williams or Keenan Allen. And he's got the Niners and the Chiefs in his next two games. Well, I, the Niners are a bigger reason. To not either one or both of them? One or just either. one. Just one. Uh, I believe it. Okay. I should have done that one. That, that would have been much better for the uh, Twitter poll. I think that's a believe it. I think that's a good one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next I, game. I can pencil it in for HQ tomorrow. Uh, Heath, you could steal it. That's fine. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I'm stealing the one. Like I told them, like all of my polls that I put on Twitter were 90% one way or the other. So I needed something that maybe there was some debate over. Jacksonville 20 and Las Vegas. Oh, sorry. Jacksonville 27 and Las Vegas 20. Believe it or not. Derek Carr I, is in his last no. year as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Hey, fine. You know what? It's your thing. You can jump right in whenever you want. All right, Derek Carr. No, I don't believe that. Why would uh, the Raiders? They owe him nothing next year. Oh, and they're currently in line for like a top five the, the pick. Colts, the Colts would back up the Brinks truck oh, to get Derek Carr right now. <laughs> okay. Well, it still Derek wouldn't Carr. be a full year as a starter because he'd do the same thing that Matt Ryan just did. <laughs> Uh, all right, here's the one. Here it is. Believe it or not, buy high on Christian Kirk. And I want to set it up because I, I wish I, I made a big mistake. I wish I had seen this earlier in the week. I brought it up on the Sunday morning show. I gave you 20 minutes to act on it if you wanted to. Christian Kirk has an incredible schedule going forward. His next five opponents are against teams that are, are something like 25th or worse against wide receivers. Uh, he just had the best game of any wide receiver all season against the Raiders. So by uh, believe it or not, you should buy high on Christian Kirk because he is a must start wide receiver. Believe it. For the record, the, the schedule moving forward is Kansas City, then a bye, then Baltimore, Detroit, and Tennessee. Some of these defenses are going to have good pass rushes, and I think that that's part of the problem with Trevor Lawrence. I thought Lawrence played a pretty clean game overall. This is another game that I didn't watch that much of. But I, from what I saw, Lawrence, I know Lawrence ran really well in the game. And Kirk got off to a slow start, I think, but then came through at the end. I don't mind targeting him as a, as a buy low or buy medium type of receiver to put yeah. on your team as a low end number two wide out the rest of the way. But how do you feel about a buy high? I don't think this is... Well, maybe he is a buy high. He did score. I'd rather have him than St. Brown and Lazard. Really? Yeah. That's kind of bold. I would go St. Brown, Kirk, Lazard. Real? What is it? Yeah, I'm going to go Lazard, St. Brown. <laughs> Lazard is so good. Lazard produces every week. It's He's the one of two guys in Green Bay that does. All right. So that's okay. So, all right. You wouldn't give up Antonio Gibson for Kyle Pitts. Would you give up Antonio Gibson for Christian Kirk? Oh, my heartbeat. gosh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Much rather have Kirk. On the Raiders' side of the ball, we talked about Josh Jacobs earlier. I mean, look, Derek Carr did score 22 points, Jamie. What do you think about him? He's got the Colts and the Broncos, unfortunately, in his next two games. 22 to 18 points. All right. I'll I almost feel like it'll be game. lower. Oh, disappointing for Evan Ingram. Uh, he wasn't having a good game. One, He cap, got hurt. But he got hurt. He, he was yeah. getting his butt cheeks massaged on the sideline. <laughs> I do think that that car hopefully gets Waller back and that could change some things. Yeah. All right. Miami 35, Chicago 32. All right. We got to do believe it or not for Justin. I've Steele. got one for this one. All right. Tua is a top five quarterback rest of season in fantasy. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Do a combined Tua in fields one. We, we do it. I don't think they can both be top five quarterbacks. That would squeeze out too many quarterbacks. Tua and Justin right. Fields are top six quarterbacks rest of the season. Mm. It's a fair question. Not, I, I don't think you're taking those guys over Allen. You're not taking them over Mahomes. You're not taking them over Hurts. And I don't think you're taking them over Lamar rest of the season because we think Mark Andrews is coming back. 
So it's can those two guys be five and six? I couldn't say they're both top five. That's how fine. many points did, did Stafford score today? 12, 13. Oh, I got my bold prediction right. If you got 12, <laughs> I think it was 12 without decimals. I think it ended up higher than 12. I know he scored less than Taylor Heineke because I traded for him and then benched him for Taylor Heineke. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, but okay. Tua and Fields, top six. That means they'd be ahead of Burrow. They'd be ahead of uh, Kyler. They'd Herber. be ahead of Herbert. I believe it or not, guys. I believe it for Tua. I, I don't yet believe it for Fields. Rest of season? Yeah. And let's say per game. We won't throw bye weeks into this. Discussion. Well, they both have their bye weeks coming up, so. Yeah. Um, right, but still, if we're just doing it on a per game basis. Per game? I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. I would buy it for both of them for the next month. I think when the Bears get to the fantasy playoffs, things get pretty ugly. And yeah. so I'm a little worried Fields might let you down in the playoffs. Um, I think Tua will be rest of season. Fields will be top 10 rest of season, but not quite top six. I almost want to say top eight for Fields, but not top top six. Like that's how close he is right now. You know, my friend asked me, he said, I have – Burrow and Fields. Should I trade Burrow for a Monra? No, should I trade Fields for a Monra St. Brown? I said sure. no, but I don't know that I should have said no. No, I think you should do that. If you have Burrow, that's a good move. Yeah, I just feel like Fields might might really be something special here. I mean, he, man, holy he, cow. The, the thing that amazes me watching him, and it's that long touchdown run, run you see it. Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't do the most creative things running and making people miss, but when he starts running one direction, he is so fast. He he's fast. I think he's the fastest goes. quarterback in the NFL, straight line speed. And he, you know, uh, you know, I, I get the privilege of watching games. Dave does at, at times as well. You know, with with two pretty intelligent NFL people in, in Pete Prisco and Rick Spielman, and you know they, they're watching him throw the ball today, and I think it was to commit. I'm not sure. It was a pass over the middle, and and Pete said. Once he gets that throw, he overthrew him. He goes, once he gets that throw down, he's going to be pretty damn good quarterback. You know, and it's it's uh you're just watching it. You know, you're watching the the throw to Mooney was was nice to see. Yes. Um yes, it was. The, the, there was a pass interference call on Chase Claypool on the left side where Claypool was getting mugged. Uh, and he tried to, you know, catch the ball with his left hand um and, and ended up being incomplete. If his hands are free, maybe he catches that pass, you know, and and getting the ball to a, a, a big receiver that he could high point the play. Um it's you know the 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 sprint outs to to the sides you know to on the touchdown to commit you know you're you're just seeing some of the the development and it's it it's happened really overnight you know because the beginning of the season mm. was a disaster and so it wasn't you know, happening the, overnight it's been happening for the last well what I'm saying is you know it, it, it was basically week five of the Minnesota game because the first four weeks were were kind of bad yeah, um, I agree it wasn't gradual and, and, it was like a switch flipped but I I saw it I saw it like two three weeks ago. And uh, that's you know, a, that's this, a I didn't see this. No. I didn't see four total touchdowns and well, crazy. It's, but it's, I did say on the show today, a hundred rushing yards. It's um, it, it's it's just impressive to to watch, you know. And and now he has, you know, the semblance of a receiving core, because those three guys, while there's not an alpha there in Mooney, Claypool, and Komet, it's it, it's it's decent. It's decent enough, you know. And and I think he'll start to, you know, improve as a passer, or continue to improve as a passer. So. You know, is he going to be better than Burrow or Kyler? I, I, you're splitting hairs, I think. You know, but if you have those two guys, one of those two guys in fields, the exact scenario that you brought up, trade one and and try and maximize the potential. And and really, the one to trade is probably Fields because, like he said, the schedule gets a little bit tougher. Yeah. Um, and it may not be sustainable, but if you could turn him into a, a starter rest away, that's the type of move that wins your league. This this is how you should have included him in the believe it or not, believe it or not, Justin Fields is will be, is. The best quarterback in his draft class. Yep. I mean, it's either yeah. him or Trevor. All right, it's a two-man race, and he's way more exciting than. Well, Trevor. you're talking fantasy or reality. He's let's talk. Let's say this. reality. I think reality is him. It, it's up for debate. Fantasy, I don't think it is. Right. Yeah, I think well, you're right. I mean, it's hey. debate if if Lawrence can hit his his ceiling, but yeah, I mean, but then right now that might not happen until next year when he's got Calvin Ridley and Christian. You're, you're, you're saying both hit their ceilings. They're going to spend a lot of capital on the offense next year. The Bears are. They have the yeah. draft, the draft capital to do it now, and like 150 so, million dollars. They, yeah, too. they've got the salary cap space to do. Yeah, it. but it's it's always hard for people to go there. You know, and the, we we just see it time and time again. Free agents don't go there. They'll time time big free agents. Somebody. Um. So you know, it'll probably be a Christian Kirk type of guy. 
you know, that type of receiver. And maybe that helps him. But I think it's going to be a lot of youth, uh, hopefully a lot of offensive line. And, you know, you 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 build out around him. Um, All right. I, I, I don't think fantasy is going to be close, to be honest with you. Hey, All quickly, right. quickly. <laughs> believe it or not, Cole Komet is a top 12 tight end. I don't believe it, but I'm certainly adding. Uh, Detroit and Atlanta the next two weeks certainly helps. Yeah. And Minnesota 20 and Washington 17. We have three games left, this and the two afternoon games. All right, Minnesota set 20, Washington 17. Believe it or not, Adam Thielen, who is rostered in 99% of leagues, is droppable. Anybody would pick him up if he's dropped. I agree. But the schedule, I know where you're going with this, Adam. The schedule the next three weeks is really, really tough. Oh, I hadn't even considered that, and that's actually a good call because he has been so matchup dependent. Buffalo, Dallas, New England. I don't know how tough Buffalo is. I don't, their secondary is so beat up, but... And I don't know how good New England's secondary is. Honestly, like the guy, I don't even think he's a top 30 wide receiver right now. He has not had more than 72 yards in any game. Uh, Hawkinson just came in and got nine targets. Uh, mm -hmm. Thielen lives in the seven to eight target range. All right, well, let, let me ask this question because we, we've, we've all done this this week, and I know By, Bye's certainly played a role in, in injuries. Terrace Marshall or Adam Thielen, rest of the way? Adam Thielen. Thielen. Yeah, definitely Thielen. Darnell yeah. Mooney or Adam Thielen, rest of the way? Feeling, but that's feeling. Feeling for they're, sure. They're, they're, they're ha like, you see him available, you're picking him up. Dro I, yeah, drop a bull doesn't mean must drop or anything. But I've been tweeting all of these, and this one I almost don't want to tweet just because I feel, I'm afraid people are going to ascribe it to me and not you. So put it on me. Say okay. It, but this, I mean, you know, <laughs> venture bull is easy. Yeah, I just he hasn't. He's been. He's been nothing. He's been a nothing. He's not even scoring touchdowns, really. And now there's a better mouth to feed in another position. Right. All right, let's do another one here. Well, not a believe it or not, but how do you feel about Antonio Gibson? I, I think pretty disappointing game. 11 carries, only two catches without J.D. McKissick, but could be an extended absence for McKissick. So um, would you, Jamie, would, or Dave, I'll go to you. Would you go right back to, Mc, to Gibson next week at Philadelphia? I... I like the matchup in that I expect the commanders to play from behind, and that should mean that Gibson's on the field a lot more. He was on the field 56% of the snaps this week, and I would probably consider starting him in full PPR against Philadelphia, but I wouldn't have very high expectations for him. Coming into this week, he had given you at least nine PPR points without considering his touchdowns in each of his past two games. What did he have this week? He had 36 yards rushing. He had 11 yards receiving. Only three targets, only two catches. Six, Six point PPR seven. points is pretty gross. 6.7, yeah. Yeah, that's hmm. gross. But I'd still say that he's at least number three running back worthy. He's certainly roster spot worthy. Okay, McLaurin. Jordan be Davis, though. That helps. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, McLaurin will be an interesting one next week. He already had one good game against the Eagles, but they, they obviously are very good against – Wide receivers, not a great game for him, but nothing to hit the panic button over. Now, Seattle. Be Killer last game too. It shouldn't be. Seattle. I agree, but it, but the, that's the time table. Could be. Seattle thirty-one, Arizona twenty-one. Uh, Geno Smith. Kudos to him. His lowest A dot or intended air yards per pass attempt of the season. Adjusted beautifully to a team that doesn't give up those deep balls, and he scored twenty-four point eight fantasy points. Great game for Geno. Mm -hmm. Um, believe the numbers it or not, after the pick six were ridiculous. Yep, stepped up in a big way, ran a lot more. Believe it or not, sell high on DK Metcalf because he's caught a touchdown in two straight games. It's a move you can make, but who are you starting a receiver in his place? What if you take Metcalf and you put another player with him to upgrade to a better wide receiver? Maybe now's the time to do that if you can get Jamar Chase, for example. Metcalf and, an, and another pretty good starter to get your March Ace. You'd have to be guaranteed to be in the playoffs. Though. Metcalf, I mean, does it bother you that DK Metcalf has two games this year with more than 64 yards? <laughs> like, that's actually pretty eye-opening. 64 or So you're putting him on the same eight, scale as Adam Thielen? No. Right? Should I, we drop DK have. Metcalf? No, but I think it's worth mentioning here. <laughs> no, it goes without saying. It's It's worth mentioning. He's he's never had a great track record of getting big yardage against Arizona. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not going to judge him for that. I'm glad he scored. All right, would I'm you rather have Christian, Christian Kirk or DK Metcalf rest of season? Heath. Full PPR, I'll say Kirk. 
Okay. Wow. I'll say DK. I'll say Kirk too in PPR. Um, all right, let's go to the Arizona side of the ball. James Conner really got going late. Uh, after it was a 10-point game midway through the fourth quarter, he had uh, more than half of his production. He had 12 touches in this game. So, Jamie, would you feel comfortable at all with James Conner going forward? We have the Rams and the 49ers the next two games. I mean, for what he is, yeah. I don't, I don't expect him to be a top-10 guy. You know, he's certainly not going to live up to his draft capital. But I, I think as a number-two running back, in the same vein as we talked about with AJ Dillon and you know some of these other guys that we were saying um who you're probably starting you know just because of you know the Jonathan Taylor conversation that we had uh you got to you got to have a pretty decent running back group to bench a guy that's going to get the work that he's going to get so you know it's not going to be excellent quality slam dunk production but it'll be enough that he'll be in the you know probably 11 to 14 PPR point range without a touchdown and, you know, a, a, a terrible game will be kind of the Antonio Gibson game, which sucks. But, you know, that's kind of the guy I think that he is at this point. All the high value touches in this game, too, by the way. There was no easing him back in. 72% of the snaps, 13 of 16 on third and fourth downs. Both of their snaps inside the 10. And I thought he had fresh legs. I thought he looked really good. Maybe the best he's looked all year. James Conner or DeAndre Swift for the rest of the season? Man, I feel gross saying Connor, but I think that's what I have to say. I would take Swift because I think there's more upside if he's healthy. Yeah, but that's a gigantic if. He's still playing through these injuries, though. So I know, but I just I got I got problems with the. So here's one I don't disagree with. John E. B. Good in our chat said <laughs> that's any picture of uh, Michael J. Fox playing John E. B. Good. Uh, <clears throat> James Connor monster second half coming. I don't know. I don't see that. Do you guys? Yeah, they remind me a little bit of the. No. It would help your teams though, wouldn't it? I don't have a single. Oh, I have one James Conner. He, he was, was the one you were afraid of missing out on. He was my okay. big FOMO player. FOMO. Now, okay. I, now I can't stand him. I I just don't. Think I remember you cool. talking about him, but I didn't know why. They're a joke. The Cardinals are a joke. Like, yeah. They are so sloppy. So many penalties. They're like the Bucks. They can't run the ball. Um. I no, don't put that on them. The Bucks are the worst running team in NFL history. Yeah. Well. Do you think there's a monster second half coming for James Conner? No. No. He, he plays the Rams and then the 49ers in the next two weeks. He does have the Chargers after that. So maybe he's got a monster game coming. He also has his bye coming up. Three there. weeks. Yeah, he's got a bye after that. And uh, then after the bye, it's Patriots, it's Broncos, it's it's Buccaneers, Falcons in week 17. You're looking at a low-end number two running back. Upset alert. We have our first, believe it or not, from Adam that the people believe. And it's the one that Adam Thielen is droppable. Hey, 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 hey. I told so you. So I will definitely put that one in the article. <laughs> um, thanks. All right. You got it. All right. Tampa Bay 16. And it's, and it's the only one you attributed to me. That's funny. Uh, Tampa Bay I did six- not. Oh, you did it. Okay. <laughs> Tampa Bay 16 and the Rams 13. Talked a lot about the Bucks offense here. Um, I You can't trust Stafford, obviously. I, I'm not. 20 points. 20 points. For Stafford, I don't know. We got it. You know what? Looks like looks like twelve. No, that's non decimal. We got to get. Hold on, Jay. What what was decimals? Oh, me. The goal prediction was two would outscore both the guys in this game. The decimals are mine, Dave. (laughs) Come on, he he, (laughs) he clearly outscored both guys in this. No, combined. No, I know. I know what you mean. Brady had like seventeen, I think, and Stafford had twelve. That's twenty nine. Let's go. No, twelve plus eighteen is thirty from Tua. Point six, and Brady had seventeen point eight. <laughs> yeah, I don't care with the decimal. <laughs> Come on, it's razor. Well, what Tua with the decimal? Uh, Tua was. Tua was. We're all sitting here. Thirty point one. You do math. You lost. I didn't lose. I got it right. All right, listen. Let let me. These two just real quick. I knew Brady would have a bad game. Real quick, um, Daryl Henderson. Led the way. Any intro, He's seventy two percent rostered. You, are we going to get a start, Heath? Are we going to get a starting running back out of the Rams like ever? Oh, occasionally, yes, but not when any of us start them. Um, Maybe in twenty twenty three. We're not going to get a starting running back that we feel good about starting and they deliver. I don't believe. No, I do not believe it. We can talk about Kate Otten on the waiver wire show. It's probably a little dependent on Cameron Brait, but he had an amazing game. 
68 yards and a touchdown on six targets. I don't know if that's amazing, but very good. Uh, last one, the Rams tight end, that's amazing. Oh, that's three touchdowns in the last 19 games against the Rams. Two for uh, Kittle, one for Otten. Okay, do you still think Chris Godwin is a must-start receiver? Yes. Should I yeah. say, I believe it or not, Chris Godwin is not a must-start receiver? No, because he... Cause Qualify people, it as half PPR. Yeah, if you ha- half PPR, you can do it. Because I think, PPR, I think it's really easy to get away from him in non and half PPR. Like, not even number two receiver. And I, this is this I is a, this is a receiver it. you could probably take Kirk over. Ugh. Interesting game against Seattle with that secondary. All right, guys, um, that's it. Jamie, always fun to have you on. Thanks for having Peace. me. Uh, you're welcome for doing all your work for you. <laughs> I did my work. I just did a bad job of it, so I needed somebody <laughs> else to do it better. And Dave, thank you, sir. Always you're good welcome. to see you, buddy. All right, uh, let's uh, watch the end of this uh, Chiefs-Titans game and talk to you tomorrow with Beyond the Box Score on Fantasy Football Today.